Joining us now to talk about how law enforcement is planning for more potential violent protest and unrest in the coming days is former FBI agent and founder of the PAX Group, Phil Andrew. Phil, thanks so much as always for being with us and getting us through uh, some uh, extraordinary uh, days. We had that press conference uh, today by the U.S. Attorney and the FBI, and they laid out so much of this case. They've gotten so far 100,000 tips. They said they are investigating a litany of crimes from trust pass to murder. They said they expect hundreds of people to be charged, said if you were part of that unrest, part of that riot, we will come knock on your door. He even said people will be shocked by what we don't know yet about what happened uh, during the, in the Capitol during the riots here. What was your takeaway from that press conference and why did it take us so long to hear from federal authorities about the nature of the investigation? I think that part of the reason it's taken so long to hear from federal authorities is the magnitude of the case and the evidence to be processed. I equate this uh, somewhat to the Boston bombing, where literally thousands and thousands of hours of digital evidence was presented to investigators and had to be combed through. So they're really not in a position to comment fully on the extent of the number of potential suspects and, um, and what crimes they could be charged with until a lot of that evidence and interviews have been processed. So this is very much a massive investigation underway. So I think that they're going to be cautious about commenting on it, but still, I think there's more room for them to fill the gap in terms of explaining um, what the nation needs to do, specifically individual capitals need to be doing to shore up their uh, protection in the face of new threats. And I think that requires a significant sharing of intelligence, um, coordination of law enforcement, and really understanding a little bit about what each capital is doing in terms of their own preparation. And that FBI bulletin that warned of planned riots at each of the state capitals in each of our 50 states, how unusual is that for the FBI to issue that kind of warning involving every single state in the country? Well, I, I think it's unusual in the sense that this is the first time we've seen this. But what we have seen are blanket um, threat uh, notifications when we've seen uh, chatter around international terrorism. Remember, we used to have a system where we were at orange, red. Um, so I, I think that it's, it's not unprecedented in the, that a broad threat that does not have uh, great specificity yet has been issued. Um, what is, uh, is a little bit normal is that they would, as they're uncovering specific threat information or general threat information, that they're going to be uh, sharing that. I think they're going to be careful what they share publicly and um, what we see that they share uh, potentially very specifically with each capital. And Phil, we saw that news today about this online thread that gave some indication of what was, what was about to come the next day. Threads that said, get violent, go there ready uh, for war. As you look back, and it's still very early with countless unanswered questions at this point, is this not just a security failure? Was it also an intelligence failure or is it too early to say? You know, I think that we're going to see that there were breakdowns at multiple, multiple levels that uh, what we understand to be threat information or threat intelligence, I think we need to do some recalibrating around that. This is a new day. This is really a new threat in some ways. And I think we have to understand that better, that uh, there'll be some retooling around that. I think there were some failures in coordination. And I think there were some failures in communication. Um, and it, we're probably looking at something like a 9-11 commission. That, uh, that, that Congress and the leaders need to come together, uh, bring some credible leaders that are going to scrutinize everything that happened, and really comb over this, looking for what went wrong, what fixes we need, and, and really what we can do to, to reconcile that. There, there may have been some malfeasance in, in some of the leadership, and there may just have been um, some incredible heroism in uh, deaf law enforcement making some really... Um, uh, uh, important changes in what they were doing when they faced the threat to manage it appropriately. And, and we're not going to know all of that until we've broken down each little aspect of, of what happened. 
Phil, as always, thank you so much for being with us. We certainly appreciate your time and your insight. I know we will be talking, talking again uh, in the days ahead. Thank you. Thank you.